What's going on guys? Welcome to Onicast where we talk about everything OTC stocks and I look like a fly. I'll take those off. Sorry about that guys. Um, and so, uh, yeah, where was I? Sorry. We talk about everything OTC stocks if you're visiting for the first time. Uh, stay tuned for the end of the show. I always answer everybody's questions. As you can see here, there are people tuning in and uh, just saying hello. And so hello guys and uh, feel free to ask questions about today's topic or anything related to uh, trading, OTC stock trading, whatever. We'll discuss it here and we'll, we'll go, go from there. I also encourage you to check out the links below in the description where we are building a platform uh, for like-minded individuals, not just within the OTC, but in all forms of trading. And we are building courses and guides and all kinds of other really great tools that's going to help you be a better trader. It's wetradehq.com. I encourage you to check it out and let's get on with it. So. As the title says, three stocks to watch for this week, uh, CMGO, FRFS, and CYPE. And I'll go over why I think they are stocks to watch for this week. For those of you who have been following me and those of you in our Discord chat where we talk every day, you know what I'm talking about pretty much for the most part, but I want to solidify that due diligence for you if you haven't seen that before, maybe something that's new that, you, uh, that I'm bringing to light for you. And again, these aren't stocks that I'm telling you to buy. These are just stocks that I'm seeing value in uh, based off of certain catalysts that are formed and are forming. And uh, it might be something that you might want to watch out for uh, as a potential uh, uh, play. So uh, seeing Metallica in Birmingham, somebody was, was uh, uh, yeah, this was actually a, uh, a Baltimore exclusive. I went with my brother. We waited for what i think nine hours because uh, we had general admission tickets got front row i called a uh, guitar pick from kirk hammett it was awesome gave it to my brother his first birthday so i just went and gave it to my brother it was pretty sweet so uh just welcoming everybody here uh eric uh dylan sharon hey what's going on hope you guys had a great memorial day and also wanted to address that as well um thank you well thank you for reminding me that today is monday um you know, just want to thank uh, those, I mean, obviously that are not no longer with us, but I wanted to really special thanks to like the families of those who have loved ones that have fallen and paid the ultimate price for, um, you know, the reason that we get to do this and, uh, you know, to, to live in America, be able to interact with each other the way that we do and even just say the things we do and even make money the way we do is all because uh, for those who have sacrificed their lives uh, to protect our freedom. So thank you to those uh, who have fallen and thank you to those families who have supported those who have fallen as well. Um, thoughts and, are with you uh, today. Uh, I have family and had family that was in the military. So, uh, you know, it's uh, one of those things I always never forget about. So uh, thank you guys for that. And so we'll go ahead and get on to um, uh, what the con our content today so uh, what's up guys a couple a couple other people uh, just slowly trickling in here so um, all right so let's get on with it just share my screen here with you we will get to the first one let's do FRFS so FRFS uh, was one the reason so FRFS has been here for a while and uh, you know, a lot of people have been hanging in this for a while, and the reason why FF, FRFS might be something to watch was because I, there was a screenshot that somebody gave. This is Investors Hub, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, and you know how I feel about Investors Hub. That is a terrible picture. Didn't I have a better picture pulled up on here? Um, yeah, here we go. So this is somebody's Charles Schwab account that now, so FRFS was uh, originally known as Firefish. And they, uh, there's, there was talk for quite some time about them merging with GIFA, which is a foreign uh, company, and, or GIFA. And it looks like it's happening. This is a screenshot from somebody's Charles Schwab account. Uh, I don't have Charles Schwab, so I wasn't able to verify this personally. So if there's someone within our Discord group that actually does have Charles Schwab, I'd be interested if you guys could share this because as you know that I always like to back up my due diligence and I don't take anybody, any one person's word for it. So if we can get multiple accounts and I was able to find other multiple accounts, but not necessarily from somebody that I directly knew. So it would be great if we could get somebody who actually has a Charles Schwab account to kind of verify this just so that we know that this isn't some smoke that they're blowing out and and that sort of thing so uh that's pretty much it so frfs and we can go in otc markets they are caveat entered right now 
This is OTC Markets, guys. Usually when you go and uh, do research on a company, this is the place you want to go, especially when you're looking up share structures and that sort of thing to see if they're current. And obviously you can see they have a caveat emptor symbol here. They had uh, an email issue back uh, last or late last year, and it, it's still hanging around here. I expect this is probably going to be lifted uh, <clears throat> rather soon if they're looking to do mergers and you know they would have to get current and all that good stuff. So I think that... You know, there are some things to watch out for here, especially if that name change is true. There definitely would be some more um, catalysts coming for that. The other thing is that I wanted, there was one more thing I wanted to show you on um, Investors Hub. Somebody that put up here. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, their website also had major updates to English, and I freaking, that's why I hate IHUB. Uh, so I, I actually went and looked at their website. So their website looked like it had been really outdated and uh, th there wasn't a whole lot that was actually in English. So I just actually um, did some uh, background checking on this due diligence, which I always strongly recommend. Don't always just take somebody's word for it, especially on Investors Hub. And uh, so you clicked on uh, Gifa Holding, I believe. If you knew what it looked like before, then you would be able to tell that some changes had made to this. This was never in English, you know, because this is a, uh, you know, Middle East company. It was uh, was definitely not in English. And so now it's been updated. So this could mean big, big things for um, FRFS. I know a lot of people that were in this sub penny. When, if you guys were with me, when we uh, played this back in late fall or yeah, late fall, I believe it was like November, October, November area, this went, uh, from a triple penny stock all the way up to seven cents and it's been fluctuating um, here and there all the way up till now sitting around seven cents right now uh, it's had highs of like I believe 13 14 cents so if this merger is actually going through and uh, that name change on on um, that oh, the, from that screenshot actually is for real we could definitely see some action with this uh, uh, for sure this week so that's the first one Second one was uh, CYPE. I have the, this chart pulled up here. CYPE uh, announced that a merger was going through. This was shouted out. The, the uh, merger was going through uh, on Friday. And this was one that's been uh, taking a while to develop, but there was always rumors of merger, of merger action coming. And this is another Joseph Vaccaro stock. I've gone over and over and over and over about Joseph Vaccaro and how he turns... Uh, diamonds or diamonds in the rough to you know just all out beasts and so that's exactly what happened to this one this was another sub penny stock I know people that I got into this I unfortunately didn't get in that low but people who are actually within our group who did uh, great due diligence I like BB stocks is another huge personality within our our group got in at uh, less than a penny I believe we got in a half a penny and now it closed at 41 cent over 41 cents um, yes, uh, on Friday, which is, I, I think that it's going to continue. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of volume here to really get it to those levels, in my opinion. I don't think that's a lot of volume at all. And so it's only, uh, I think, in my opinion, it's going to be another one to just continue to watch. I'm not saying that it's going to go to like dollars or anything like that, but I think it does certainly have the potential for that. And another thing, so if you're wanting to know, okay, where did, uh, you find this information how do you know that a merger happened well again if you go into OTC markets news that was released a here it is proposed reverse merger with Nigerian businessmen and the merger actually went through so uh, that is why we saw a dramatic increase it opened up at I believe it was around 11 or 12 cents on Friday went up to 41 cents, which a huge in increase in and of itself. If you got in at just at the, at the mere open, uh, I actually got into this. I got into it a little bit late. I noticed that there was going, there was a pullback late in the day and got in late just because I saw p potential. I got in at around 27 cents when, when there was a pretty decent pullback and then it surged right back up over 40. Uh, and I was pretty happy with that. You know, it was obviously I was late to the game in this one. I knew that there was potential for this. I just was playing so many other positions that just this one just wasn't directly on my radar i like to play stocks that are you know at a penny or lower 
typically just because I like to see a maximum return on my investment. But uh, if there's money to be made, I'm going to be there. So this was one that I, I saw potential in, especially when they had that pullback. I uh, determined that that 27 cents was not, um, you know, where this thing was going to stop. And I really don't think that it's going to, just in my opinion, I think we're going to see, uh, you know, well over 50 cents, uh, a, a continuation of this, just based off of the fact that it didn't take much volume at all to really blow this thing right out of the water. There's a lot of dollar volume though. I over, I think it was either at or over a million dollars in dollar volume and uh, was pretty amazing to see, especially in OTC, you don't see that too often. So the third one was CMGO. I know I've been telling you guys about this one. This has uh, been a stock to watch for a couple weeks now. We, this one is uh, a stock to watch because they are experiencing a lawsuit and that lawsuit was moved up and that's usually a good sign for people for in favor of the plaintiff. The judge decided to move this up and uh, there was some pretty damning evidence. I've already gone over a lot of that. If you want to go ahead and watch that whole entire video on due diligence for that stock in itse itself. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. Now, I don't see if there's ever going, if there's going to be any selling going to this, uh, I don't think there's going to be, but if there is, I would see, say that it's probably not going to go any anywhere below uh, a penny here because this is a pretty strong resistance here at like a penny two or 102. So I think that, you know, if it does, if there is any more selling, also there was really a huge, um, I guess concern over that market maker B A R D, but it turns out that they are a multi-billion-dollar company, uh, or, you know, investment firm that uh, usually is in like their bigger board stocks, such as Nasdaq and stuff. So that's why we're not used to seeing it down here. So uh, I don't think that there's anything to worry about. I think that we will still see a nice run into that court date, and uh, we'll determine what will happen to the stock after that court date as well. Anything. Uh, that runs into a court date, uh, guys, is always a, a major catalyst. Whether it's, um, you know, whether they win the case or not, it always runs into that just the anticipation of the fact that they may win. So I'm not saying that they're going to win $200 million. I'm saying that based off of history, these stocks like to run, um, you know, on that, that sort of thing. So, um, all righty. So just kind of um, looking over some questions here. So anyway, those are the three stocks that uh, you know I have covered for the night that I think that are going to be ones to watch for uh, for the uh, for the week, the short week. It's going to be again. I want to re readdress FRFS, CYPE, and CMGO are those stocks to watch. Uh, and you know again, based off of the catalysts and due diligence that I've seen, I see value in those, and I think that they're going to uh, see some action. Um, this week really looking forward to CMGO I think even if they don't necessarily win all 200 million dollars it'd be nice to see them win something and the valuation of that company could go up a lot so we'll just see uh, it's very low float uh, based off of that structure and uh, you know I just think that it's it's really gonna take off uh, especially if they win that case it's gonna be huge so um, interested to see how that one's going to play out. So anyway, as uh, usual, as per the usual, at the end of all my live streams, I always like to answer your guys' questions. And so I'm going to do that here today. Um, or right now, rather. Did you guys have trouble seeing the screen? I hope you guys saw that whole thing. So can't see what you're doing. Oh. Oh, no way. Did I not show you the screen? Holy crap. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, well, I hope to... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? Okay, hold on. What were you seeing? Were you just seeing this? Oh, my gosh. I don't know why. That's really weird. Let me see something. Let me bring you back. Can you see that? You can still just see my face? Just my beautiful face. Well, hey, you know what? You saw my whole face the whole entire time, so whatever. At least you're able to... Wait, can you see it? Now you can see that. Oh, that's weird. 
I don't know what I did. I'm sure it was my fault. I'm sure it was absolutely my fault. So anyway, guys, um, <laughs> I can't believe that. All right, so just a real quick recap. I don't want to have to go over everything again just because you heard me talking. You know what I was saying. Um, so anyway, Gifa Holdings. Look, this one's in English. Never was before. Uh, a lot of more due diligence here that I showed you or well, that I didn't show you, that I meant to show you. Whatever. Sorry about that. Here is the screenshot of the Schwab account that someone shared on Twitter that says Gifa for FRFS. CMGO, we already know about. I already talked to you about that. Here is where it will not, where I don't think it will go anywhere below until we uh, get closer to that court date and see what happens. CYPE, self-explanatory, started at around, uh, or opened around 10 cents uh, on Friday and then closed at 41. Boom. How about that? Huh? And I mean, you could, you know, you, you didn't have something too bad to look at, right? I mean, it is, it is what it is. Sorry about that. So that was a speed round after all that talking. I do apologize for that. Man, you know, what I, what I always think I got to figure it out. I always screw something up. You know, but it is what it is. Such is life when you're going live. It is what it is. Um... It's all good info, I promise. How do we hear about CMGO court date through an 8K? Uh, it'll probably be hearing about CMGO through uh, Pacer. I actually went over the Pacer website before uh, <laughs> for the entertainment. <laughs> so Dylan gave me two bucks for the entertainment. So, hey, well, at least I gave you that. Um, but CMGO, no, it probably won't come out in 8K. We, we will find out. I mean, I, I'm sure it will come out in 8K, but we'll probably find out about that news well before the 8K itself actually comes out. Um, so uh, please be following along with us in Discord. I'm sure somebody will be sharing that um, as soon as, it, as news breaks on that. Uh, will CYPE need another catalyst in order for the next run? Uh, I think CYPE is, is still in its catalyst, really. I mean, the news just came out Friday, so I don't think the run's over, in my opinion. So, uh, it flipped back to, I wonder if it's, uh, you know what? I might've pushed a, a, a hotkey. Somebody said it flipped back to your face, uh, for after about two minutes. I was like, ah, yeah, that's probably what it is. I have hotkeys where I flip back and forth. I must've accidentally pushed it. That's probably what happened. Maybe I should fix that hotkey thing. <laughs> uh, all right. We'll let them know where you go to find reinstatement information. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to try and share my screen and I will show you. So reinstatements, for those of you who aren't aware, reinstatements are uh, major for the OTC because it is ta basically taking a shell company and um, making it active again. So usually when companies take a shell company maybe that's maybe defunct and, uh, you know, um, you know, we'll reactivate it with Nevada Secretary of State. Well, they, Nevada Secretary of State isn't the only state that does this. This is just the most popular one because of tax benefits and that sort of thing. So let's just, since we're talking about FRFS, look up Firefish and I'll show you where you can find the reinstatement. So if you click on the company, you have to type in the actual company name. Tickers don't work for uh, any Secretary of State that you're looking at. So you go and you know, I'll click on Firefish and registered agent change amendment reinstatement right here boom so this is where you'll find all that information oftentimes it'll say active or defunct let's find another one um favored Oop. can show that for you as well these are just ones that i know that i always kind of like look for look see this one says active status business and if it's not active it'll say uh, defunct or inactive or something like that um, or revoked I think revoked is the actual word uh, now that it comes comes to mind so that's how you would find out reinstatements and a couple of our friends have gotten together and actually started to create software that would allow us to be able to show, use that um, and we're trying to work with uh, some of these secretary of states actually to try and see if we can uh, provide that for you guys uh, it's not not set in stone or anything like that. 
It's just something that we think that we're trying to reach out to them and work with them so that we don't have to constantly go and look and just search for that company all the time. So stay tuned for that. There's obviously a lot of legal stuff going on um, that pertains to that sort of thing. So, you know, when you're talking to like state officials and, and that and that sort of thing. So it's just uh, something that we're working on. Um, my hot keys are smoking. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, what the heck? I don't understand. All right. It's probably because I keep hitting shift. And I know shift is one of my... All right. Let's try this again. Sorry. Okay. There you go. Buy some. Someone buy him a beer. Yeah, please buy me a beer. I really would appreciate it. So anyway, this is uh, active. See? FBRD says active. This is favored. Normally it would say revoked. Okay. Man, I'm, I'm not. This is what happens when I go three days without doing a live video. I'll just lose it all. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm really sorry. It is what it is. Sometimes... And now I keep saying it is what it is, but whatever. Uh, at least I'm comfortable making mistakes on here any, anymore. Usually it would just be um, 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 and it is, yeah, whatever. But uh, thank you, Tater, wanted to know as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, well, at least I was able to show you the reinstatements. I know some of you um, were uh, you know, curious about that, so glad... Glad I was able to help around two and thirty minutes. You guys, you guys are relentless, but I love you anyway. Um, okay, best live ever. I know <laughs> at my expense, right? I mean, this should actually. Um, I got other videos that I have planned for you guys that you can laugh at my expense as well. I mean, it is what it like. Like the whole comments thing. That was probably one of the most the most fun I've ever had making a video because I get to laugh at myself and I get to laugh at you because we're all idiots, right? At the end of the day, right? We're all dumb. We're all dumb. We just try to be smart. Um, so anyway, <laughs> as always, guys, let me just uh, end it there. Uh, if you're watching, most of you who are on here now probably already know about We Trade HQ, but I want to reiterate that We Trade HQ is about to go live. It's we're really close. The course is almost done. It's all coming together, but that's not going to be the end of it. We are looking for other individuals and influencers that can help us grow, not just within the OTC, but with uh, big board stocks, with crypto, with uh, forex, all that stuff. And we're going to try to bring them all together and then bring you guys together. So that's not just the OTC show or it's not just the, the Bitcoin or crypto show. It's, it's everybody who can basically be in one spot and learn from each other and not have to bounce around from site to site to site. It's all going to be there that we can provide it for you. Whether you uh, haven't traded a day in your life or you've been trading 20 years, we want to be able to provide that platform where everybody feels comfortable and knows that they're getting something out of it. So super excited for that. WeTradeHQ.com. Please register via email to get news updates. And um, you'll also get notified the day that we go live for that as well. And yeah, super excited for that. Uh, follow me on Twitter at OwnTheChaos. Follow me on Instagram at OwnTheChaos. And that is all I got for you guys tonight. Uh, appreciate you guys being patient with me. Hope everything's fine in Maryland. Yeah, so we had a terrible flood uh, a town nearby uh, my place. Um, and so, yeah, I just got distracted with that. But it, it was a really terrible flood. Um, Ellicott City, thoughts and prayers with you guys. So anyway, guys, uh, as always, I will see you all before the bell. Man, this was rough. <laughs> I love you guys. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait uh, for what's ahead and as always i will see you all before the bell b smith is out oh my god i'll see you later i'll see you later